Number 10. Chanakya. Born in 375 BC, Chanakya's real name was Vishnugupta who was a scholar in the court of the Nand dynasty of the Magga Empire. According to legends, he wasn't happy by the way Dana Nand, the last king of the Nand dynasty was running the empire. He found him incapable of defending the empire from Greeks who were approaching the western border. This led to a dispute between him and the king. Insulted by the Nanda king in court, Chanakya vowed never to tie his lock until the Nanda empire was overthrown. He selected Chandragupta at the age of 19, trained him, and saw him rise to power which marked the beginning of the Mauryan Empire. Chandragupta would go on the established one of the biggest empire in Indian history. Chanakya played a key role in his conquest. He was an excellent strategist because of which, he is also called Kautilya. Chanakya knew how to win battles and he was devious in his ways. He was credited for the fall of Alexander the Great when he invaded India. Chanakya gathered the kingdoms of India together in this fight and succeeded. Chanakya died in 283 BC in Pataliputra during the reign of Bindasara, Chandragupta's son. Chanakya's death is clouded with mystery and is not revealed precisely so far despite several efforts by scholars. However, there are two standpoints to it with the one stating that he starved himself to death and the other stating that he was killed through a clever plot woven around him. However, both these standpoints stem from the story that is connected to his miserable fate. Number 9 Khalid ibn al-Walid, also known as the Sword of Allah, a title given to him by Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. He was the greatest warrior of Islam and is well known for his battle tactics. Non-Muslim media don't want him to be presented as a hero as they are in propaganda against Islam, and they want to close their eyes to the reality, otherwise, every non-Muslim well knows how he defeated his enemies and never ever faced a single defeat. Khalid bin Walid remains the only military general in human history who fought more than 100 wars and lost none, a military accomplishment no one ever achieved be it Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, Napoleon Bonaparte, or any other renowned military man, every one of them lost at the end. He defeated both the Persian and Roman empires. He fought battles with the ratio of 1 to 5, meaning that he confronted an enemy minimal five times greater in number than his forces and yet defeated him every time. Khalid ibn al-Walid died in 642 was buried in Homs, Syria. Number 8. Subatai. Born in 1175, Birkin Khaldun, Mongolia. Subatai was a Mongolian general and the primary military strategist and the most celebrated Genghis Khan's and Ojade Khan's generals. He directed more than 20 campaigns and won 65 pitched battles, during which he conquered or overran more territory than any other commander in history as part of the expansion of the Mongol Empire. He often gained victory by means of imaginative and sophisticated strategies and routinely coordinated movements of armies that operated hundreds of kilometers apart from each other. Subutai is well known for the geographical diversity and success of his expeditions, which took him from Central Asia to the Russian steppe and into Europe. Subutai was a military genius who realized that long term, the life of his own troops was of enormous value. He took incredible care in his campaigns to minimize Mongol casualties. He often did this at the cost of time. You can read more about this in history books that engendered great loyalty among his troops. He was a master strategist who was able to analyze multiple data points and come to a plan for a war that was almost always perfect. He was able to do this by a combination of innate ability, deep knowledge of his own soldiers and of the enemy and an intense focus on gathering knowledge about his enemy, which was rare for that time, and also a bit of luck. He was one of the first generals to make heavy use of scouts and spies. This was extremely useful in the open lands where the Mongols often fought. He always knew more about his enemy and knew it earlier. Subutai returned to Mongolia from the Song campaign in 1248 and spent the rest of his life at his home in the vicinity of the Tul River, near modern Ulaanbaatar, dying there at the age of 72 in 1248. Number 7. Sun Tzu. His birth name was Sun Wu. The name, Sun Tzu, by which he is best known in the Western world is an honorific which means, Master Sun. The Master Sun was a Chinese general, military strategist, writer, and philosopher who lived in the Eastern Zhou period of ancient China. Sun Tzu is traditionally credited as the author of The Art of War, an influential work of military strategy that has affected both Western and East Asian philosophy and military thinking. His works focus much more on alternatives to battle, such as stratagem, delay, the use of spies and alternatives to war itself, the making and keeping of alliances, the uses of deceit, and a willingness to submit, at least temporarily, to more powerful foes. Sun Tzu's historicity is uncertain. 
the Han Dynasty historian Sima Chan and other traditional Chinese historians placed him as a minister to King Helu of Wuan dated his lifetime to 544 to 496 BC. Some of Sun Tzu's popular quotes are 1. Appear weak when you are strong, and strong when you are weak. 2. To win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill. 3. The greatest victory is that which requires no battle. 4. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Number 6. Scipio Africanus. Africanus was born in 235 BC, Rome, Italy. He was a young ambitious man who wanted to seek revenge against Hannibal after being involved in a defeat of Roman forces led by his own father. At the time where Rome was invaded by Hannibal, no less a tactical genius himself, after crossing the Alps, the Senate was desperate for a commander to lead their forces in Iberia where they hoped to crush Hannibal's source of supplies and fresh troops. Scipio seized this opportunity and this set him on the path to leaving a legacy in history. His main achievements were during the Second Punic War. His greatest military achievement was the defeat of Hannibal at the Battle of Zama near modern Zama, Tunisia in 202 BC, whereby he created wide lanes, like isles, in his formation, he mitigated the charge of the Carthaginian elephants which ran through the path of least resistance. The loud-massed Roman trumpets also turned the elephants against the Carthaginians' own cavalry. The victory was one of the feats that earned him Theognomen Hay is best known for. Africanus. The most famous military achievement he is well known for was at the Battle of Illipa. On the first day, he placed his battle-hardened veterans in the center with his flanks covered by his relatively weaker Spaniard allies. His opponent followed suit, having a strong core and weaker flanks. On the next day, Scipio suddenly reversed his formation where the center was now made up of his Spaniards and flanks of his veterans. Expecting a similar formation, his opponent did not change his and it proved to be a decisive strategic move. With his Spaniard allies holding the center, his flanks quickly crushed the opposing flanks, this creating the reverse canne or a concave line. Therefore the Carthaginian center found themselves flanked and folded quickly in fear. Scipio Africanus used the enemy's own overconfidence and smart maneuvering to defeat many numerically superior armies, thus cementing Rome as the major power in Europe for a long time. He died in 183 BC, Largo Patria, Italy. Number 5. Julius Caesar. Julius was a Roman general and statesman who played a critical role in the events that led to the demise of the Roman Republic and the rise of the Roman Empire. Caesar's tactical brilliance was compared to that of Alexander's stature. The Battle of Elysia took place in September, 52 BC. It was the last major engagement between the Gauls and the Romans. It was the turning point of the Gallic Wars in favor of Rome. The Battle of Pharsalus was the decisive battle of Caesar's civil war. He defeated his longtime friend turned enemy, Pompey. Though Pompey had a greater number of warriors, Caesar's army was more experienced and better trained. He was patient and thoughtful. In battles at this time, there was a routine. Once the armies came into contact with each other they would deploy each day for battle and stare across the field at each other. Then if one side felt they had an advantage like having the high ground or favorable weather conditions they would try to force the battle. The other side would then either commit to battle by choice or force or they would decline battle and return to their camp. This could go on for weeks. Caesar was known to be very good at this part of the war. He was known to have near infinite patience and would wait and wait until he felt he had all the possible advantages he could. Caesar would always send scouts to find enemy positions and never rush into anything. Simply put he took his time so that he never put himself at a disadvantage. The Roman army was strong. They had the best organized military on earth and featured the most capable and armed heavy infantry around. If ambushed or surrounded, they were terrible but in a standard battle, they were nearly unstoppable. They were also master builders able to construct roads, bridges, and forts on the fly and Caesar used this ability time and time again. Caesar knew though that the legions had weaknesses and Caesar would always use allied troops to fill in these weak spots. For instance, the Gallic cavalry was a huge part of Caesar's army. C. Isa declared himself dictator for life in 44 BC. However, his crusade for absolute power didn't go over well with many Roman politicians. Fearing he would become king, a group of senators conspired to end his life. On the Ides of March, March 15, 44 BC, the senators, led by Gaius Cassius Longinus, Decimus Junius Brutus Albinus, and Marcus Junius Brutus, 
stabbed Caesar 23 times, ending both his reign and his life as he fell bleeding onto the Senate floor at the feet of a statue of Pompey. Did you know, Caesar's last words were, you, too, my child, and not, a too, brute, which means, and you, Brutus. Number 4. Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte was born in 1769, also known as Napoleon I, was a French military leader and emperor who conquered much of Europe in the early 19th century. Born on the island of Corsica, Napoleon rapidly rose through the ranks of the military during the French Revolution. After seizing political power in France in a 1799 coup d'état, he crowned himself emperor in 1804. Shrewd, ambitious, and a skilled military strategist, Napoleon successfully waged war against various coalitions of European nations and expanded his empire. Napoleon's victory at Austerlitz is a perfect example of why he's considered one of the greatest military commanders of all time. It's considered his most historic triumph, the obliteration of a larger army consisting of both Russian and Austrian troops, the battle that ended the War of the Third Coalition, of which there were seven in the Napoleonic Wars, that's right, seven coalitions formed to end the threat of Republican and later Imperial France, and also dissolved the Holy Roman Empire. After his defeat in Russia and his defeat at the International Battle at Leipzig in 1813, his enemies offered him a peace treaty. He could have remained Emperor of the French. And there would have even been some territories added to pre-revolutionary France but he refused. Napoleon abdicated the throne two years later and was exiled to the island of Elba. He tried once more to conquer Europe. In 1815, he briefly returned to power in his Hundred Days campaign. After a crushing defeat at the Battle of Waterloo, which was his final defeat he abdicated once again and was exiled to the remote island of St. Helena, where he died there on May 5, 1821 at age 51 most likely from stomach cancer. Number 3. Alexander the Great. Alexander III of Macedon, commonly known as Alexander the Great, was a king of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedon and a member of the Argid dynasty. He was born in Pella in 356 BC and succeeded his father Philip II who was assassinated by his bodyguard Pausanias to the throne at the age of 20. Alexander claimed the Macedonian throne and killed his rivals before they could challenge his sovereignty at the same age of 20 years. The first major battle he won was the Battle of Granicus, fought in 334 BC, in modern-day western Turkey, not far from the ancient city of Troy. During the battle, Arian wrote that Alexander defeated a force of 20,000 Persian horsemen and an equal number of foot soldiers. He then advanced down the coast of western Turkey, taking cities and trying to deprive the Persian navy of bases. He was the first person to unite the whole of Greece, except Sparta and Crete, against the Persians. He fought his battles leading from the front and was always in the thickest part of the fray. Once, he shocked his troops by scaling the inner city walls of a city they were besieging in Punjab, Mali, and jumped in alone, another Homeric-style stunt, possibly inspired by Diomede's attempt to scale the walls of Troy. The surprised defenders withdrew momentarily, but on recognizing him they attacked. Alexander stood his ground, killing the king, but was badly wounded by an arrow in the chest. When his troops finally caught up with him, they believed he had been mortally wounded. He was usually never harsh to those he defeated, which is why many cities willingly accepted him as a conqueror without a drop of blood being spilled. He encouraged his men to accept the locals as equals and adopted many of their customs himself. One of the main strategies of Alexander the Great was relying on his skilled soldiers. He put his trust and faith in him. He also was a leader who anticipated enemy movements. And he would study the possibilities the enemy may attempt. And he would counter them. This is how he built one of the largest kingdoms in the world. By 323 BC, Alexander was head of an enormous empire and had recovered from the devastating loss of his friend Hepestian who was also reputed to be one of Alexander's homosexual male lovers. Thanks to his insatiable urge for world supremacy, he started plans to conquer Arabia. But he'd never lived to see it happen. After surviving many fierce battles, Alexander the Great died in June 323 BC, at age 32. Number 2. Hannibal Barker. Hannibal Barker commonly known as the man who hated Rome, or the father of strategy, was born in ancient Carthage in 247 BC. 
He was the Carthaginian general and statesman who commanded Carthage's main forces against the Roman Republic during the Second Punic War. When Hannibal's father died, he assumed command of the army at the age of 26. He had, at the young age of nine, escorted his father to Spain, where he promised him that he would never be a friend to Rome. Hannibal became the Carthaginian general during the Second Punic War. Hannibal's journey through the Alps is described as one of the greatest achievements of ancient warfare. Even though he lost several of his troops and animals, he was still determined to make the journey, showing the strength of a leader who was on course to do anything at all to defeat the enemy. By the time they reached the other side, Hannibal's army had been reduced to about 26,000 men in total and a few elephants. Hannibal proved himself to be the greatest military leader to ever defeat Rome. He employed his strategical genius in all areas of his career, enhancing his impact greatly. It can be drawn that Hannibal's achievements and failures are still pertinent for examination by historians and experts of the military arts, though there are no singular set of definitive rules learned. In the words of Livy, Hannibal was always the first choice, whenever courage and determination were needed, and there was no leader for whom the soldiers held greater affection or showed more daring, most fearless in seeking danger most calculating in the presence of danger, no amount of exertion could tire his body or soul. Heat and cold he endured equally. Hannibal was finally defeated by Scipio Africanus at the Battle of Zama in 202 BCE and retired from service to Carthage. Hannibal poisoned himself in a final act of defiance against the Romans. The year is uncertain but was probably 183. Number 1. Genghis Khan. Often considered to be the greatest conqueror of all time, Mongol leader Genghis Khan was born in the year 1162. He rose from humble beginnings to establish the largest land empire in history. He brought all the nomadic tribes of Mongolia under the rule of himself and his family in a rigidly disciplined military state. Some historians believe he was the first person who used cannons outside the wars in China. The proof is most historians believe Europeans learned gunpowder from Mongols in Russia. Some of Genghis Khan's achievements during his reign were 1. He changed the culture of Mongols by adopting loyalty and meritocracy rather than traditional aristocracy. 2. He is the first ruler who introduced diplomatic immunity. 3. Defeated the Chinese North Song dynasty. 4. Allowed free religious beliefs across his empire. 5. He destroyed his enemies completely even if it took a long time example being Kushluk, and the list goes on and on and on basically the guy achieved a lot during his conquering years. It is believed that about 30 to 35 million people were killed during his brutal conquests and tens of thousands tortured and injured. When Genghis Khan returned to Mongolia in 1225, he controlled a huge swath of territory from the Sea of Japan to the Caspian Sea. In the early years of 1227, a horse threw Genghis Khan to the ground, causing him internal injuries, he pressed on with the campaign, but his health never recovered. He died on August 18, 1227, just before the Shi Chia were crushed. Mongol leader Genghis Khan never allowed anyone to paint his portrait, sculpt his image or engrave his likeness on a coin. The first images of him appeared after his death. Please share your thoughts about this list in the comments below. Who did I miss and should have definitely been on this list? And please state why. Thank you for watching.